वेलकम टू लेक्चर नाइन ऑफ एस बी आर आई एस सिक्सटीन प्रॉपर्टी प्लान एंड इक्विपमेंट बिफोर आई स्टार्ट दिस लेक्चर लेट मी टेल यू फ्रॉम योर एग्जाम्स पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दिस लेक्चर इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एटलीस्ट वन क्वेश्चन एवरी इयर स्टूडेंट गेट ऑन आई एस सिक्सटीन सो यू हैव टू बी वेरी वेल प्रिपेयर फॉर द स्टैंडर्ड बिकॉज देर आर टू सेट्स ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड इन एस बी आर वन विच आर माइनर स्टैंडर्ड्स which usually does not come but having an understanding is essential of all and some which are major standards which is always asked like is 16 or your ifrs 15 revenue recognition or uh, you can say ifrs 9 financial instruments or ifrs 3 this standards always comes right they are repetitive so when they are repetitive it's a good thing why because you can score marks in this areas because you have plenty of questions to do on the standards right so whenever you start any standard in sbr just know what is the nature of that thing is it an asset is it a liability is it an income is it an expense or is it an equity why because always link to your first lecture we started with conceptual framework so conceptual framework says if it's an asset you recognize it you measure it you present it you disclose it like this if it's a liability you do the this uh, you measure you disclose you present it like this if it's a equity do it like this if it's an income do it like this if it's an expense do it like this so all the standards whatever you're doing in sbr is nothing but simply your five component asset liability income expense equity you just have to know what is the nature of it then accordingly you can link it to your conceptual framework always so is 16 is property plant and equipment what is it it's a asset what type of asset is it non current asset this is what you have to identify okay so let's start with this in this lecture we are going to focus on the definition of property plant and equipment what includes what is included in that and what is not included in that also you have to understand because sometimes examiner will confuse you they will give you some items which might look like non current asset but they are not that's the reason you have to clearly first identify what is included in that non current asset what is not included okay then accordingly you have to treat second initial recognition how do you initially recognize every standard has this thing if you see all my standards previous standards also you will see everything every standard has this how do you initially recognize how do you subsequently measure how do you initially recognize how do you, how do you subsequently measure this is there in any standard okay and you have to know it it's a must must that you have to know so initially how do you recognize non current asset property plan and equipment then there are measurement models you have to understand some standard will give you the flexibility they will give you a choice this or that some standard they are fixed use only this method the standards where it is fixed use only this method those standards are easier because you don't have to use your brain to think you know this is the measurement model just measure it like this but some standard like is 16 this standard it gives you a choice out of two which you have to choose and in choosing also there are some criteria that you need to follow okay then depreciation because it's a non current asset it will depreciate so depreciation policy is also you have to know then componentization what is the meaning of componentization see non current asset is just not one there will be many non current assets and if one non current asset might have different parts to it you understand it one example is aircraft it has different parts to it which might be uh, depreciated in different ways with different percentages for example an aircraft has seats its engine its fuel its labor there are so many cost to it so many component you know so, so many parts to it then de recognition the way you recognize it you should also understand when to de recognize this is in any standard okay when you de recognize it then finally we are going to conclude with disclosure what do you disclose about non current asset so let's start with the definition of property plant and equipment i have highlighted it in bold for you 
so that you never forget. Property, plant and equipment are your tangible items. What is tangible item? Tangible means anything that you can touch, that you can see. You can go to a factory, touch machines, no? They're tangible. Why tangible? Why did I emphasize on the word tangible? There are two types of assets. Tangible, intangible. For intangible, we have a separate standard IS38. That's why. That's why do not get confused between these two types of assets. One is intangible assets. One is tangible assets. If it's a tangible asset, IS16. If it's an intangible, IS38, which we are going to go, uh, deal later on. We have not finished IS38 yet. But uh, when we do it, that time we'll be dealing with intangible assets. So you need to separate these two types of assets. Understand? Obviously, tangible is easier to identify because you can see, you can touch. So, intangible assets that have to have this characteristics. Number one, you should held it in your company for more than one year. Because all your non-current asset will come here, not the current asset, not your cash, not your stock, not your debtors, not your prepayment. No, only non-current asset. So non-current asset means long term. Okay. But purpose is very important. Why are you? Are you are you are you keeping it to sell it next year? Or let's say you are buying an asset. Let's say you are buying a machinery, but your purpose is to sell it in five months. Can you take it under IA 16? No. No, you can't. There is a separate standard for that. When you're taking an asset, even if it's a non-current asset, but your purpose is to sell it within 12 months. That will be dealt under IFRS 5. Non-current assets help for sell. You understanding? Non-current asset is a big thing. It has so many parts to it. So many small, small standards comes from there. IS 16 is a major. That's why you need to understand not to get confused. So that asset has to be in your business for producing goods and services. Or you can even rent it. You can give it as a rent also. So anything used in the purpose of production of goods and services or rental purposes or administrative purposes is non-current asset. In the exam, you have to look for these purposes, whether they are there. Examine, I mean, in the case study, you can read and understand whether it's for long term or they want to sell it or what is the purpose. Second characteristics is more than one period. That means more than 12 months. It has to be there in more than 12 months because non-current assets feature is what? It's there in the business for more than one year. That means more than 12 months. If it's less than 12 months, it's not a non-current asset. IS-16 will not be used to deal with it. So as simple as that. Now, when do you recognize this? Remember conceptual framework, what does it say? You recognize asset when this, this, these things are there. Same way, IS-16 also says, you recognize property, plan and equipment as an asset. Go back, think about the characteristics of asset. When these things are there, two things. Number one, you are going to achieve some benefit. That means cash is going to come to you, cash inflow in the future. Second, cost. You can measure the cost reliably. If these two things are satisfied, you can recognize. Otherwise, you do not recognize it as an asset in the first stage itself. You understanding? Because once you recognize only comes uh, measurement, disclosure, presentation. When you do not recognize it as an asset in the first stage, later stages it does not matter. Okay, so this at this stage you have to be very uh, careful. Are you recognizing it as an asset or not? Because remember, if you recognize it as an asset, then later you have to depreciate it, then you have to disclose it, things like that. Okay, now initially recognition there is no choice you have to measure all non-current asset at cost that's why i highlighted it in bold for you so that you never forget you can make a note of this you measure it at cost and what does this cost compromises of please understand not any cost some costs are expenses some costs you need to capitalize it that means you have to take it as a property planning agreement cost that you have to capitalize it are purchase price yes at let's say car at what price did you purchase that car let's say 10,000 that 10,000 is taken as a property plan and equipment cost second cost direct cost any direct cost that you require to bring that asset to the location and its condition 
let's say the car is in the factory you want to bring it in the showroom to any cost incurred to bring that car from factory to your showroom you can capitalize it you can add it with your purchase price because you have that because that is a direct cost and that cost is incurred for you to bring that car to the showroom you are bringing asset to the location and also condition sometimes condition might not be uh, good the car might not be in a position where you can sell the car so you have to incur some cost to bring it into the working condition so that you can sell it in the market that cost is also taken as property planning equipment cost you can add it third cost any cost that you have to dismantle let's say at the end of the year okay you are having a machine let's say for three years the project is working you need that machine after third year the project is over you don't need the machine any longer now what do you have to do you have to dismantle or remove the asset so any cost incurred in that removal is also taken as your cost you add all these three costs purchase price cost of bringing asset to location and condition dismantling cost all these three costs you add if there are any other cost other than this three they are taken as expenses in the profit and loss account okay you will not add it with your this three cost this you capitalize it okay so what should entity do for this type of cost they have to provide a provision for this cost of decomp let's say for an example okay you have to recognize a provision for the cost of decommissioning an oil rig or a nuclear power station okay then this are the costs that you should never capitalize they are expenses number one any admin or general overhead any abnormal cost like repairing or wastage is lying or idle time you are not using the machinery never capitalize this cost cost incurred after the asset is physically ready for use do not capitalize but unless those costs are that type of cost that increases the economic benefit of the asset from which you can incur more cash that you can capitalize otherwise no any repair maintenance never capitalized cost incurred in an initial operating period operating period means already the asset is there for the use you are using the asset initial period you are incurring loss let's say operating losses in the first few years that is not taken capitalized that is expenses and if you are incurring any cost to bring that machine to its full capacity is also never capitalized expenses cost of opening a new facility let's say you are introducing a new product like to introduce a new product you are uh, spending on advertising promotion you are going in a new location or training the customer training the staff all these are expenses all this one two three four five type of cost are expenses goes in the profit and loss account never capitalized understand in exam you will you might be given both the type of cost together in one question you have to understand which type is never capitalized which are capitalized okay then we are moving on oh yes one more cost relocation if you are relocating your staff from here to here there are cost incurred right you have to give them fuel you have to give them the car that is never capitalized now we are moving on to the next step that is measurement model this comes after only after initial recognition once you recognize it's an asset then only you measure it otherwise if you do not recognize it as an asset what's the use of measuring it you forget about it so initial recognition is met now comes measurement model so is 16 gives you a choice what are the two choices it says either you can measure your asset at cost or revaluation or revaluation model two models cost model revaluation model from the word itself it's understood what it means cost model means you are looking at the cost and revaluation means revaluation right now please understand even if you you might be thinking oh wow let me choose anything no even if you are given a choice you are given that choice with some limitation what is that conceptual framework says whenever accounting standards gives you a choice okay your aim has to maximize the relevance 
you have to select such a model that will maximize the relevance of it that's why i have highlighted the word relevance how can you uh, how can you do it you have to consider number 1 what is the characteristic of that asset and number 2 in which way that asset or a liability whatever it is in this case it's an asset can contribute to future cash flow look at these two characteristics and then decide cost model is more relevant revaluation model is more relevant we'll do a question on this also don't worry at the end of this lecture now let me explain you this through example the two characteristics number one let's say there are many property plan and equipment which generates cash flow indirectly indirectly means they are used in combination with some other asset you understanding so according to conceptual framework you can use historical cost for this kind of assets it's more relevant in this case why because it is not very direct it is indirectly you are generating cash flow use historical cost does not matter second there are some assets let's say land and building what is one characteristic of land and building if you see they are very sensitive to market highly sensitive to market factor anything happens to the market you always see the price of the building keeps going up down up down up down land also up down up very volatile changes are very drastic there why because they are highly sensitive to market factors this type of assets so you see over the year prices keeps rising only whether it's land or whether it's building so for this type of asset using historical cost is not relevant why because let's say 10 years ago you purchased a land if you compare the price the fair value of that price today after 10 year material there's a material difference between the two price the purchase price and the fair value so using historical cost is not giving you the relevance rather use the fair value the current value so in this type of assets you have to use current value that is that will give you more relevance where the prices are materially different between the purchase price and the fair value where the prices are not so material you can use historical cost also okay now let's start cost model cost model says when you are using a cost model how do you calculate whatever the price is remember the three prices purchase price dismantling price and any cost that brings the asset to its uh, location and condition okay so all those three cost you add from there you deduct accumulated depreciation because it's a non current asset you have to depreciate it also so deduct it so from the cost of property plan and equipment deduct your depreciation and any impairment loss impairment loss you might have you might not have if you have deducted if you don't have don't worry about it revaluation model is same the only changes in the rather than using cost now you use the revaluate revalued amount that means fair value okay fair value less any accumulated you will see your depreciation also will keep changing now your depreciation will be higher because it's on a fair value revaluation model right when the value goes up automatically depreciation also will be higher so that higher depreciation you have to calculate that you have to deduct from the fair value and if you have any impairment loss deduct it so simply fair value minus depreciation minus impairment loss for the cost cost minus depreciation minus impairment loss isn't it simple guys yes but revaluation model if you are using you have more things to take care of what are they number one revaluation has to be made sufficient regulated that means sufficient you have to keep revalued once it's revalued you you chose revaluation model to use once make sure that you have to use it every time you have to be consistent in that you cannot use one year revaluation model second year cost model third year revaluation no you have to keep using it. sufficient regulatory sufficient like regularly you have to use it okay second if you revalue any item let's say in particular class of an asset there are many classes of assets okay not all assets are same so let's say in class a asset you revalued one item 
Now you have to go and revalue re re all the items in that class. That's a rule. Don't ask me why. That is maybe to bring it uh, to make it more fair, right? In a particular class of asset, if one item is revalued, it's better to revalue the other items also because in comparison, it becomes easier then. I mean, it's a headache also. Then you have to worry what is cost, what is revalued in a particular asset, class of asset. Third, this is very important because this is an area what examiner usually ask. What is it? You have to understand what happens when the revaluation increases, how you have to deal with it. When a revaluation decreases, how to deal with it. If a revaluation increases the value of an asset, where do you write it? Where do you present it? That increase is presented under other comprehensive income. Oh, see, I please understand this. Oh, memorize it, note it, memorize it. If revaluation increases the value of an asset, write that increase under other comprehensive income. And after writing it, there remember for uh, items presented under other comprehensive income, there are two things that you have to know. One, items that can be recycled to profit and loss later in the future, item that cannot be recycled. So this one is item that cannot be recycled. Okay. So one is in your profit and loss account, you are presenting, uh, you are presenting it under other comprehensive income. Okay, but in your statement of financial position, you are presenting it under revaluation surplus. Like how we have share capital, share premium, we have a retained earnings, we have a revaluation surplus. There you are giving it that increase in value, it is given there. Okay, if it's a revaluation decrease, the problem often comes here. Students often get confused because they always treat it like same increase and decrease. No. If a revaluation decreases the value of an asset, that decrease is not under the comprehensive income, immediately goes to profit and loss. Decrease should be immediately in profit and loss unless there is a rule. Unless there's a revaluation reserve for that asset already, which is showing surplus. What, do you, what does it mean? Come on, let me repeat. If it's a decrease, immediately goes under profit and loss, but if there's a revaluation reserve already for that asset, let's say in the previous years, value was going up, up, up. So all the amount went under revaluation reserve. Now what happened this year decreased. So that decrease, first you decrease it from your revaluation reserve, that surplus you have. Then the balance goes to profit and loss. But if you do not have that revaluation reserve already, let's say in the first year itself, it's a loss. Then all, the full amount goes to profit and loss. Okay, if you're not understanding this, don't worry. Good in SBR, if you have to understand a, a, a theory or rules, because it's rule based, rule based, see, I always tell rule based are easier to pass. That's why SBR is the easiest paper to pass in ACC. I always tell this. If you want to get the highest mark, you will always sit this in SBR compared to any other paper because it's a rule based. You know the rule, you crack the paper. That's how it works. But to understand the rule better, you have to do lots of questions. You understand SBR through numbers, not just memorizing it. Revaluation increase, okay, revaluation. The more you do questions, the more it is memorized. It will be there in your subconscious mind. That if a revaluation increase, this is how I deal with it. If a revaluation decrease, this is how I deal. So more and more questions you have to do from that area. Because it's a rule base, it's easier. Because it has a specific way of doing it and that way only you have to know it. There is no, it's not an open-ended question. That whatever you do, you don't know whether it's correct or wrong, like SBL or audit or your APM. This are a little tougher because they're open-ended. You can go in any way and you're correct. The thing is you have to justify. Here you don't have to justify. Here is only one way. It's like maths. One plus one is two is two. Okay. So now, don't worry at the end, we have a question. Okay. And end of the lecture. That means you have to watch my lecture till the end. So you cannot just walk out from here. Otherwise, you'll be missing that golden opportunity of doing a question with me on the standard. We only have one question. Okay. Next, depreciation. This is quite easy. We know all non-current asset has to be depreciated. But which type of asset? Those assets which has a finite useful life. Let's say they will tell you. This asset is for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. They will give you the useful life. Those assets you can depreciate. 
So depreciable amount is what? Simply your costs minus the residual value if they give you the residual value. Okay. Most of the time they do not give you the residual value. So you don't have to worry about it. Just don't keep finding it if it's not given. Next, what is residual value? Residual value is how do you calculate residual value if they don't give? They might give you the net selling profit. Okay, residual value, this is how you calculate. Net selling profit received if the asset was at the end of its useful life and it was disposed of today. That means what is the price that you're going to get today if you have to sell that asset? Let's say iPhone. You have purchased it three years back. Now after three years, you want to know what is the price. So you go to the market and try to sell and come to know what is the amount that you are going to get by selling this apple today. That is known as residual value. But it's a net net selling profit. Why? Because there are some cost also of selling. So that cost you have to deduct from the selling price. The balance is a residual value. Understand? Then where do you write depreciation? We all know it's an expense. So it goes to profit and loss. Okay. But if it is included in the carrying amount of another asset, unless it is uh, included in the carrying amount of another asset, it will go to profit and loss. Depreciation begins, you have to know when the depreciation begins. It begins when the asset is available for use and continues until the asset is de-recognized even if it is idle. What does it mean? Sometimes, let's say useful life of a machine. Let's say you are having a asset for let's say machine for five years okay in those five years do you think all the time the machine is operating no let's say some few months or some year let's say for one year the asset was lying idle you're not using that asset does it mean you don't have to calculate depreciation for that one year you stop depreciation and then you start calculating again no all those five years that asset was with you you have to recognize depreciation whether you use the asset or not whether it was lying idle or not does not matter but once you decide to sell the asset or the asset reaches its useful life, then that asset is de-recognized. Then you do not uh, calculate depreciation. The day you de-recognize asset, after that point onwards, you do not measure, you do not calculate depreciation. Understand? But asset has to be available for use not before available for you. Sometimes asset is not in the position or the condition to be used. You cannot calculate depreciation from that point onwards too. It has to be available for use. From that point onwards only, you can start calculating depreciation. This looks easy, trust me, this looks very easy. But in the exam, students often get confused about the date. They will give you three, four different dates. This date, the asset is available for use. This date, the asset was brought in the market. This date, the asset was pro uh, whatever it is. It's very confusing to choose the correct date for depreciation. I'll tell you students often get wrong in this area. Looks easy now. Trust me, do a question on past paper. You will get it. You will understand this better. What, I'm, what I mean to say. Then we have more about depreciation. Depreciation is a systematic basis. That means every year you allocate some cost of that asset. Okay. There are two ways. We know that. Straight line reducing balance method straight line basis means is the same every year let's say your non current asset value is 20 20000 and it's for 5 years so 20000 divided by 5 every year this will be a depreciation fixed reducing balance basis every year a fixed percentage you reduce it second year you reduce depreciation from the uh, non current asset value and then on that you calculate percentage so every year on the balancing amount, you keep applying the percentage. Okay. In exam, let me tell you. In exam, any method could can any method can come. Be prepared for both the methods. You have to know how to calculate depreciation using straight line and also reducing balance. Any one might come. If you're straight line, it's easier, it's better. You're lucky. Reducing balance does not mean you're unlucky, but it has a lot of works to do. Okay. Then See, depreciation methods based on the revenue generated by NetWeight are not appropriate. You cannot decide which method of depreciation to use based on the revenue generated. It's not a good way. Why? Revenue itself is generated from many factors. For example, inflation, sale price, sales volume, 
okay it is not about how much asset you have consumed that brings you revenue but revenue can come from your sale price how you have priced it what is your volume and inflation that's why never use depreciation method based on the revenue then last thing about depreciation the depreciation method its residual value and its useful life has to be reviewed every year annually and if you see it has changed why annually these are the three areas which can change and it keeps changing and if it changes, you have to update it you cannot use let's say useful life today you are buying an asset you are predicting useful life is for five years after next year when you review you came to know useful life is even less than that so you have to bring down the useful life rather than sticking with that what you have uh, identified in the first year no keeps changing same for the depreciation method sometimes you feel let's use straight line next year you came to know reducing balance is better better that's why you have to review annually because this they never remain static they never remain fixed can change anytime the deposition measure the residual value and the useful life that's why you have to review it regularly annually i would say once a year and any adjustment that you make to your depreciation remember any adjustment it is taken as change in accounting estimate why did i emphasize on that there is a separate standard for that also to deal with accounting st estimate i've done it just recall which standard is it which standard is it recall let, let me let me test your recall uh, memory how much can you recall is8 exactly if you are thinking of is8 that is the right standard we dealt with changes in accounting policy accounting estimate and prior period error so the change in deposition is an accounting estimate and how do you deal it according to is8 let me ask this question now i know it's a previous standard but anyway tell me so now you know even if the question the focus of this lecture is is 16 even in that big standard big standard small standard can come small small standard now is 8 so always be prepared for those small standards which can come under the big standard like under is 16 you will come across is 16 sorry uh, is 8 because of changes in deposition you might call uh, come across provision is 37 because of the decommissioning cost and all those things in the cost of an asset so always be prepared for it you will be getting the small small standards also so changes in accounting estimate is dealt prospectively prospectively that means you change in the future you do not go back and change in the past you change in the future only assuming that from today itself is the change you have been dealing with the new deposition method okay now so we are over with depreciation let us move to componentization this is small but from the exam's point of view could be complicated okay i'm giving a warning because so that you practice more on that area i'm not trying to say it's very difficult you are not going to score anymore now the reason whenever i say this is a little challenging or difficult do not get scared don't panic your job is to go and do questions more on that area because what i want is i want you to score maximum marks that you can score for sbr trust me and it's easy also i know that that's why i wanted to focus on this a little challenging area more that's why i emphasize more on those things it is not to scare you but a little bit uh, getting scared is also good because you then you then focus more on that area anyways coming back to this some parts okay not all the parts you deal uh, at the same time some parts require more regular replacement regularly you have to replace it one example is seats in an aircraft compared to its engine let's say engine you can replace it let's after two years but seats more regularly you have to replace it okay so this replacement part should be capitalized remember replacement part should be capitalized and the carrying amount of the old seat you have to de-recognize it do not forget because now you are bringing new seat so what do you do with the old seat de-recognize it to recognize a new seat you have to de-recognize the old seat right when i have to sit in a chair let's say a person is already sitting on a chair what should i do can i go and sit no 
I, I take that person out. Okay, that person has to get up from the seat before I can set. Same way, old seat has to be de recognized before new seat can be recognized. Understand? But what happens if the carrying amount of the replaced part is not known? Let's say the old seat's price you don't know. The carrying amount you don't know. Then what do you do? Then you use the cost of the replace new replacement part. Okay. That you take as a cost of the old seat. Using that cost you estimate what would have been the price of the replaced part that means old seat when you originally bought it. Some assets like aircraft. They can they can only operate if regular inspections for the faults are carried out. You see in this aircraft and all, regularly inspection keeps going on to check for the fault and all. Okay, so this inspection cost has to be capitalized. And any remaining carrying amount that has been done in the previous inspection, de-recognize. Same way, previous inspection you de-recognize, the new one you recognize it, capitalize it. What about depreciation for this type of component? Depreciation also has to be charged separately for each part. Significant part because some parts are not significant. Group them together. Aggregate them together. Sum up. But some parts are significant component like engine, air, engine and seat. You cannot take them together. They have different depreciation rates. You have to depreciate them separately. But parts which have a same useful life. Let's say you have five parts. In an aircraft, all the five parts have 10% depreciation, and useful life is also five years. Group them together and find one depreciation. Okay, so parts which have the same useful life, you can depreciate them together. One asset is having 10 years, the other one is having five years. Can you group them together? No. But let's say two assets or so three parts of an asset, not asset, three parts of the same asset, useful life is five years. All the three, group them together. And find one uh, depreciation rate rather than finding three three separate depreciations. Anyway, at the end you can add them together. That does not matter, but better to group it. D recognition. When do you de recognize an asset? When you dispose it, correct? Or when you see that there are no further economic benefits, you are not getting any benefit from that asset. D recognize. So two reasons could be that one, either you sold it off, either you are not recognizing, you are not getting any benefit. So in this case, whenever you de-recognize, always, 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 this is often overlooked by students. They do not think too much. They forget. What is it? Gain or loss. You have to recognize gain or loss on that asset. Because obviously when you have sold an asset, you must have incurred some gain or loss on that. So you have to recognize it. And what is that uh, gain or loss? Nothing but just the difference between how much you have sold it at what price minus your carrying amount of that asset of the asset that you are going to de-recognize. What is your carrying amount of an asset? Let's say your asset is 5000. You are planning to sell it for 6000. So 6000 minus 5000 your gain is 1000. Second thing is when a revalued asset is disposed of, please understand. When you are disposing a revalued asset, what happens? Any revaluation, any revaluation surplus, you can transfer it to the retained earnings. Or, or it may be left in the revaluation surplus within other components of equity. It's your choice. Either transfer it to retained earnings, either keep it where it is under revaluation surplus only. But this is only for revalued asset, okay? Not when you are choosing a cost model disclosure last but not the least is 16 says entity has to disclose this thing number one which measurement basis have you used cost or evaluation second what is the useful life of the asset and the depreciation rates then a reconciliation of the carrying amount at the beginning and at the end of the period if items of property plant and equipment are stated at revalued amounts Okay, remember information about the revaluation also should be disclosed. Okay, so now that's it for this lecture. 
we are over with this lecture but before i summarize everything at the end let us do a question so in this question you are supposed to explain how the above ppe will be accounted in all the relevant reporting periods up until 31st december 2005 now if you see that there are two asset okay how do i know that because in this asset they are talking about building in this asset they are talking about machine so there are two elements of property plan and equipment that you have to deal with let's start with building cap bought a building on 1st of jan 2001 you see they told for all the relevant reporting periods up until 31st december 2005 that means from 1st of jan 2001 up to 31st december 2005 you have to account for this building first of all the moment this building is said okay what is it it's a property plan and equipment see sometimes you have to first decide whether it falls under this or not then you deal with is 16 okay sometimes they already will tell you that the above property plan and equipment have to be accounted under in this case there is no doubt that this will be dealt under is 16 why Look, read the requirements explain how the above items of this 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 they already told they already mentioned that this building and this machine are property plan and equipment so you do not you do not have to look for the facts whether it is held for more than 12 years whether it is obviously it is held for more than sorry more than one year you can see it the time period right but other facts like are they being used for the production or they have been used for selling you don't have to see for it but if the question was how the above things will be dealt with first you have to understand which is it is it under i16 is it intangible asset then i38 or is it non current assets held for sale then it is ifrs 5 in this case there is no doubt it is is16 the standard also they will not give you they will only give you terms like this so property plan and equipment the moment you read this three words you know it is is16 this is how you have to know it in the exam in the requirements they will not mention the standard in case you forgot the number don't worry don't write the number but at least you should know the rules of property plan and equipment what do you know that's the whole thing in case you forgot the number let's say rather than is16 you thought maybe it is is15 or 18 even though okay there are no is15 but let's say or maybe you got confused with some of the standard let's say you thought it's is18 never make this mistake when you forgot the number when you are in doubt never use the number why because if you say according to is38 is38 deals with intangible assets and you are given the rules of property plan and equipment you this you should never do you should only state the number when you are very confident 100% you are confident that you remember the number and usually most of the time according to uh, what i have seen students do not forget number they they remember the number somehow because they have been doing this questions over and over again so the number is there okay but anyway let's come back to this so cap order building on first purchase price was 2.9 legal fees is 0.1 million general admin cost is 0.2 million you see they are giving you different types of cost now it's up to you what you will capitalize what you will take as an expense cap also pays sales tax of 0.5 million which was recovered from the tax authorities building was attributed a useful life of 50 years revalued to 4.6 on 31st december 2004 and sold for 5 million on 31st december 2005 okay i i can understand that you have pictured everything about building okay this is a tall building next is machine okay this was purchased on 1st of jan 2003 you see there are two different assets you have to deal with it in two different ways because building you bought on 1st of jan 2001 machinery you bought after 2 years 400000 and useful life is 10 years understanding on 1st of jan they reduced the estimated remaining useful life to 4 years here they changed the useful life from 10 to 4 years that's what is happening in the machine okay so now this you can write this answer in any order 
either you can deal with machine first either you can deal with building first any order is fine as long as you are correct so let's start with the building when you are answering requirements like this where there, where there are two assets more than one you always have to use subheading number one okay i am not only telling you the correct answer i am already i am also telling you how to approach an answer question like this how to start with the answer the structure of the answer the layout of the answer the points that you have to write in paragraphs how to write in subheading all these matters a lot in sbr not only in sbr in any paper because in passing your acca paper it is not just the correct answer it is also how you present that answer that matters a lot remember this always okay so now let's start with the building okay so i'm going to write the subheading down building you write a subheading like this obviously you will be typing this in your word so the building now decide how many paragraph are you going to immediately start jumping and writing about what are you going to write about building how you start how you end so first decide how many paragraphs you have to write this is this is a must in writing any excellent answers in your acca p level decide how many paragraphs you have to write under this this obviously depend on the marks also but here the marks are not given but at least you should know what are you going to write about building initial exactly what did you what did you studied in ia 16 initial recognition initial recognition is at cost what cost you capitalize what you do not capitalize okay there are two things this is a plan okay i'm giving you capitalized and what you expense after that subsequent measurement later years cost or revaluation this is first paragraph this is second paragraph then what depreciation and if you are selling it then comes de recognition in this case i think you are selling so at least four paragraphs will go in this answer for machine it is a less you have to write because it's only about changing in the useful life so obviously in under machine you have to write less paragraph i think the answer you can finish it in two paragraphs okay so first you start with initial recognition okay the building okay okay let me uh, erase this thing mm. okay so now i am going to write this answer okay i'm not going to write the full fledged answer you can write it in your own words and sentences but the first paragraph would be about recognition so the building would be recognized on 1st of jan 2001 write the date the date when you bought the machine building sorry 1st of jan 2001 matters a lot because dates here especially in this question dates matters a lot you have to write it for multiple years first of jan 2001 first of jan 2002 first of jan 2003 first of jan 2004 first of jan 2005 how for how many years 2001 2 3 4 5 5 years okay so the building would be recognized okay blah 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 you can fill in the sentences building would be recognized on 1st jan 2001 at a cost of write the cost you have to write at a cost of because it's not a revalued amount at a cost of how much how much tell me i will highlight the cost for you 2.9 because purchase price legal cost yes you need the legal fees for the building and all you need the legal fee you have to capitalize this fee okay because this is required to bring the asset to condition and location yes they will not write words like that in the lecture you must have gone through 
cost required to bring condition in the uh, cost required to bring the asset into location and condition they will not write it like this in the exam they will just give you like this fees admins fees that fee that fee this cost that cost the name of the fees they will give you the name for the cost you have to decide under which it falls okay general admin is 0 0.2 will general admin be capitalized the 0 0.2 will it be capitalized as an expense capitalized or is it an expense it's an expense i will highlight it in a different color okay sorry i think oh uh, wait this is an expense what about sales tax which has was coming from the tax authorities this is also expense so this two are expense only capitalized as 2.9 and 0 0.1 so add both that is your cost okay so here at a cost of dollar three million please show next to it in bracket always show in bracket how did you obtain that three million because directly it's not given okay so just write 2.9 plus 0.1 2.9 is the purchase price 0.1 is the legal fee okay any cost that you have not written here what are the two costs one is sales tax one is one is general admin you didn't write it right you still have to write in your answer why you didn't include it why you didn't include it here in the cost you have to write it you have to write reasons for it in the first paragraph only because he has we are still talking about the cost okay so the sales tax right recoverable sales tax because you, you are recovering it right so the recoverable sales tax is excluded from the cost of property plan and equipment okay it is excluded some costs are just excluded you don't have to give a reason for it general what about general admin cost so admin cost of how much 0 0.2 million will be expensed you have to write the correct treatment of each one even if you have not included in the cost but it will be expensed no somewhere it will go so that also you have to write will have been expensed expense where where do you write expenses profit and loss to profit and loss now coming to the second paragraph remember in the first year 2001 you just recognize it as a cost after cost what comes depreciation right you have to depreciate it in the first year revaluation and all comes later year but you have to depreciate don't forget that depreciation in the first year uh, on the cost 3 million so next paragraph leave a space and then write depreciation do not start sit and start describing what is depreciation okay just write depreciation will be how much straight to the point depreciation in this case will be how much okay i'm going to write this answer here as i told you always in the bracket if your workings are very small in the bracket itself you can show if your workings require a major workings then you have to use excel for it for those things you don't have to use excel do you need Excel to uh, add 2.19 uh, with 0 0.1? Do you need calculator to add 2.9 with 0 0.1? I mean, come on. So what is the cost? 3 million. It's a straight line basis. Otherwise, they would have given you the percentage and they would have told you it's a reducing balance. But this is straight line. How many years? How many years? See here, they have not mentioned whether straight line or anything, but they do. They give you the cost and they have given you the useful life. That's enough to understand it's a straight line. Otherwise, they would have given you the percentage of depreciation. If you want to know whether it's a reducing balance basis or not. From 2001, okay, wait. 1st of Jan 2001 was the ID building you got. From 31st December 2005 how many years 2001 2 3 4 5 5 years so you have to divide this 3 million by 5 years
sorry not five years 50 years because useful life is 50 years okay somewhere here they have told useful life is 50 years here 50 years divided by useful life so 3 million divided by 50 years is how much 0 0.6 million depreciation of 0 0.6 million where will it go always in sbr whenever you're writing something whether it's an asset income expense liability equity you have to write in which place it goes correct place you have to write don't think just because it's an asset i will deal with a building colors finish no depreciation also comes with building it's an expense so where will it go profit and loss profit and loss so depreciation of this much will be charged to I will just show through an arrow. You can write in sentences. Never show it in arrow like this. I am only showing you in order to save time. You have to write it in full proper sentences. Okay. This will go to PNL. This will be charged to profit and loss. For how many years? Please understand. When was this revalued? When is where's the revaluation date? 31st December 2004. So that means for 31st December 2001, 31st December 2002, 31st December 2003, three years it will be charged at this depreciation. This depreciation will go to PNL. Understand? You need to follow an order. Can you understand that order? From 3 million, then we depreciate, then we'll talk about revaluation later on. Don't immediately start jumping to revaluation. Okay. So PNL in each of the years. What are the three years? 31st December 2000. 31st December 2001. 31st December uh, 2002. 31st December 2003. These are the three years. 0 0.6 million deposition will be charged in the PNR. Now, now third paragraph. Leave space talk about revelation because from 31st december to you see you are following a timeline timeline time order has to be followed you have to start from december 1st of jan 2001 first three years no change normally you can just write depreciation after that then revaluation happened in 31st december 2004 so we are talking from here onwards timeline has to be followed in your answer so prior to the revaluation please before revaluation you have to know what is the carrying amount okay of the asset because you must have deducted depreciation for the three years from that cost so prior to revaluation revaluation on write the date when revaluation happened on 31st december 2004 carrying amount of the building this is how you write an answer like this it's not very difficult if you know this layout if you know this format which no one talks about right everyone says do questions do questions but no one shows you how to do that question how to approach that's why this channel is very unique you will fi always find this it gives you solutions also some practical uh, tips to do a question which you will not get in any other youtube channel because no other channel is running such a thing and they're not doing a full flesh questions so carrying amount of how much Fill in the blanks, show it in bracket. Okay. See. Understand this. Okay. It is the same deposition, you can bring it here. 3 million divided by 50 years. Okay. But this happened for how many years? You have to take out from the 50 year already you have depreciated how many years three years also one year additional you have to add because this revaluation happened on 31st december 2004 but from 1st of jan to 31st december 2004 one year depreciation will be here so it will be into 46 years understanding you have when you come to 31st december 2004 from first of I will go back. Okay, this is confusing. I know. Don't worry. First of Jan 2001 to 31st December 2004. How many years? Four years. So out of the 50 year, reduce four year. Four year depreciation. 
So that's why we took 46 for 46 years. Okay, because now useful life will be 46 years. When you come to 31st December 2004, from here onwards, it will be 46 years because the previous four years will be deducted. Right, that's why we did this. So 3 million divided by 50, deposition 0 0.6 into 46 years. Which will be how much? Calculate and check. Tell me 2.76 million. This will be the carrying amount because you want to know the carrying amount. Or in short, another way is just find the depreciation. 3 million divided by 50 is 0 0.6, right? Right? Depreciation already we calculated. So just do 0 0.6 into 4 years. Because first for 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004. So 4 years, how much? 0 0.6 into it is 2.4 right so from no it is uh, 0 0.024 so from 3 million just deduct 0 0.024 you will get this answer 2.76 0. no it is 0 0.24 sorry i'm sorry it is 0 0.24 0 0.24 it is 0 0.24 so from 3 million the cost deduct the four years depreciation 0 0.24 you will still get 2.76 is the same whether you do this or that this method this will be your carrying amount okay so now you have to write this is the carrying amount of this one will be in the year ended okay now this is the so now 31st December 2004, what happened? You sold it. It was for 3. It was revalued to 4.6. But if you compare the revaluation with the amount sold, 4.6, but it was sold for 5. You can understand there's a gain. Isn't it? I told you gain has to be calculated. Gain or loss. In this case, it's a gain. So calculate that gain. In the year ended, 31st December 2004 gain on revaluation a gain on what is the gain on revaluation you have to compare what and what is it 4.6 with 5 million no fill in the blanks okay in the bracket show 4.6 it has been revalued to 4.6 minus this carrying amount. This is that's why you need the carrying amount. On 31st December, uh, 31st December 2004, what is the carrying amount? 2.76. So from 2.76, it has been revalued to 4.6. The difference you want to find out. Okay. That means how much it has increased. We are not still dealt with the the sold it has been sold at 5 million at which date 31st december 2005 we ha we still have not reached to that stage that's the last year okay we just want to know from the carrying amount how much it revalued so it increased to four point that means you can understand this is an increase this increased the value of an asset this revaluation because it's higher than 2.76 how much it increased that's why it's a gain on revaluation not a loss okay 1.84 million And where will it go? I always tell you, you have to write the place where it will go. Just showing the amount that this is a gain. This is a loss is not enough. Where will that gain go? Where will that loss go? So this gain will go, will be recognized. OCI, other components of income. It will go to other, I, as I told you, increase in revaluation will go to other components of income. And held within equity. In your statement of financial position will it be recycled to profit and loss later on no then in the year under 31st December two thousand five now next paragraph last para we are talking about two thousand five you see the timeline it has been following 
what happened again let's talk about the building the depreciation so the building would have been depreciated over its useful remaining useful life what is the remaining useful life now when you come to 31st december 2005 four years already went from 50 years so remaining useful life is 46 years okay you can write over it's you have to write it over it's the remaining and you also have to show how you got that for six years over is the remaining useful life it will not remain 50 it's 50 years from first of september first uh, of uh, jan 2001 but when you come to 2005 four years went by 2001 2 3 4 then it's 46 years from there onwards so remaining useful life okay of how much 46 because 50 minus 4 years you have to show it like this 50 minus 4 that's how you got 46 so at 31st december 2005 what is the depreciation i'm writing short form okay fill in the blanks what would be the depreciation What is your revalued amount? Is it your cost 3 million? No, now it is your 4.6 million, your revaluation amount. So you have to show it in bracket. This revalued amount divided by 46 years now, not 50 years, remaining useful life. So 4.6 divided by 46, how much? 0 0.1, 0 0.1 million. This is your depreciation now. What is the carrying amount? Because of this now, the carrying amount will change. Always deal with three things. Depreciated, depreciated amount, carrying amount, and the gain or loss. So the carrying amount, how much? Fill in the blank. How much will be the carrying amount? At the disposal date, what will be the carrying amount? Because 31st December 2005 is also the disposal date, right? What is your revalued amount? 4.6. From here, deduct the depreciation. So it's 4.5. Now, when you calculate whether gain or loss on the soul, you compare with this 4.5 and then you decide. I know it's a long step, but you have to do questions like this multiple times to understand the pattern. So now, On 31st December 2005, a profit on disposal of how much? See, it has been sold for 5 million, carrying amount was 4.5, always relate to previous. Okay, so 0 0.5 million. Okay, so a profit on disposal of 0 0.5 million. Where will this profit go? I always told you the place. PNL. Statement of profit and loss. Write it. Now we have to deal with the revaluation gain. Why? Because earlier we had a revaluation gain of 1.84. I will highlight it for you. Now there is a gain of 0 0.5. That's why you have to deal. You have to talk about it. Previously, so. Where did you previously recorded the gain? OCI. Talk about that now. Revaluation gain previously. If it was newly you have recorded, you don't have to write the word previously. But here, since already you have done it, so write the word previously. Revaluation gain previously recognized. Write the place where you recognized it. It's very important. Recognized within. OCI other comprehensive income okay are not reclassified are not re because you sold right at the 31st December 2005 that's why you have to write it whether it will be recycled to profit and loss or not whenever you are selling an asset so in this case are not reclassified to profit or loss on the disposal of the asset 
because whenever you dispose i told you some standards they say recognize it, you can uh, reclassify to profit and loss but this standard is 16 says no you cannot it will forever remain in oci only okay so on the disposal on the disposal of of the asset okay however cap but you can do transfer isn't it however cap why because the name of the company is cap you have to always mention the name of the company could do a transfer with equity this you can do transfer you can do what is that transfer what was that gain previously recorded i have highlighted it 1.84 you can give, you can bring it to retain earnings as i told you right from revaluation reserve bring it into retain earnings you can transfer it so already you recognize that gain in oci you have to debit it from there it was credited earlier now debit it because you have to remove it out so debit other components of equity because from equity you are taking it out and putting it under retain earnings so debit how much previously recorded gain 1.84 1.84 million and debit where sorry credit where retain earnings so when you are disposing it you can do this transfer from components of equity you can bring it to retain earnings this is allowed this is how you show do you understand so we are done with the building completely now we are moving on to the machine the next this is easier this in two paragraphs you can finish it because you bought it later on so you don't have to deal with 2001 and 2 only you have to start for 2003 2003 2004 2005 3 years okay so for 2003 and 2004 there is no problem useful life is 10 years the change only occurs from 2005 so quickly first paragraph is very easy just write the cost and the depreciation same way you have done for building same way you have to do for machine you have to start your answer like that initial recognition so the machine would be recognized on 1st of jan 2003 at cost already they have given you the cost 100000 and depreciated over 10 years so how much will be the depreciation depreciation fill in the blanks 100 divided by 10 so it will be 10000 this much will be the depreciation will be charged in the year ended for 31st december 2003 and 31st december 2004 this two years 10000 depreciation will be charged now we are coming to 31st jan 2005 what did cap do please write it in your answer cap changed changes its estimate changes is useful life so you have to talk about it what is this change in uh, useful life means this is a change in accounting estimate this you have to write whether it's a policy whether it's a estimate whether it's a error this is not an error this is not a policy depreciation is always estimate because you estimate depreciation so this is you have to write it like this clearly you have to write it's an estimate this is a change in accounting estimate i will highlight it for you so this words are there in your answer it has to be there these are the keywords which will give you marks so and because it's an estimate you all also have to explain 
and therefore it is dealt with how are you dealing it remember the two words retrospectively prospectively did retrospectively prospectively this is estimate you change it in the future not in the past so prospectively is the word remember these two words is more than enough one depreciation is accounting estimate two it is dealt prospectively this is more than enough you can even give the standard also that according to is 8 it is dealt prospectively or you can just say it is dealt prospectively but mostly in the it's good to write the name of the standard according to is 8 in your exam if you see your revision kit questions or past paper they always write the name of the standard i according to is 8 it is dealt prospectively what is the next carrying amount when this estimation was changing from 10 years to 4 years you have to know what is the carrying amount carrying amount of the asset at the date of the estimate was how much see two years depreciation you will deduct 10000 10000 that means 20000 you will deduct it from 100 so 100 into 100 divided by 10 that is the depreciation into two years you deduct so, sorry I'm sorry 100 from 100 you minus this 100 divided by 10 into 2 because two years depreciation you have deducted from 100,000 so it will leave you with 80,000 understanding this will be the carrying amount the remaining carrying amount you have to use the word remaining okay remaining carrying amount will be written off over the revised use the word revised life of useful life of four years so from 10 years it fell down to four years now what do you do depreciation how much will be the depreciation now what is your cost carrying amount is 80,000 now after deducting two years depreciation now it will be divided among four years so 80,000 divided by 4 20,000 depreciation 20 you see depreciation doubled earlier it was 10,000 now it's 20,000 in the year ended you have to always write the year this will be the depreciation 31st December 2005 that's it that's it so this is how you answer a question on IS 16 now is your job to go to past paper or revision kit pick up your revision kit pick up is 16 and do all the questions in is 16 so that's it we'll be ending this with we'll be summarizing what we have went through in this lecture so we started this lecture with initial recognition where we told we initially recognize it at cost and these are the costs that you capitalize purchase price Cost of bringing asset to location and condition and dismantling cost. Cost other than these three are expensed in profit and loss, like admin, overhead, recoverable sales tax, cost of relocating, training staff, right? Then measurement models, the two measurement models, cost and revaluation, but you have to choose which one give you more relevance. If the material, if the price, the fair value and the cost is materially different you have to use revaluation model if the material the difference is not so material you can go by cost model then we went through depreciation we told that they must have a finite useful life okay if they do not have a finite useful life you cannot depreciate it simply just write if you are given an asset where they will tell you infinite useful life you do not depreciate simple you just write it you do not depreciate but they 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 will not give you infinite useful life they will mostly give you those assets which has a useful life okay let's say five years ten years twenty years thirty years whatever it could be then 
two ways straight line reducing balance okay it will be given to you in the exam which method to use if it's a straight line they will just give you the percent they will just give you the number of years or sometimes they might give you the residual value also remember to deduct residual value from the cost before depreciating if no residual value just take the cost and if it's a reducing balance they will give you the percentage 20 percent 10 percent whatever and each year after reducing the cost to keep on uh, keep on getting the percentages on that reduced amount after deducting the position from the cost okay let's say in the first year there is no issue let's say depreciation is 20 percent useful life is four three years so just take 20 percent on the cost first year deduct the cost uh, deduct the depreciation from the cost in the second year you have to find that 20 percent on not on the cost after deducting the depreciation from the cost on that amount you have to calculate the 20 percent so each year you keep on doing like this for a reducing balance straight line is easier okay it's the same deposition every year reducing balance is a little tricky you have to work on it but it's not difficult in excel will help you to do that check which method okay third any adjustments in depreciation is accounting estimate and accounting estimate are dealt prospectively in the future you go and change not in the past and finally we ended with d recognition we d recognize you calculate gain or loss and two reasons why you have to de recognize either you have sold of the asset either you're not getting any benefit from it and finally we disclose it we disclose the depreciation rates which depreciation are we using if we have revalued we have to give details of it which method are we using cost model or evaluation model all those things so that's it for is 16 please go and do questions on it i have solved the whole revision kit for you there's a separate playlist that is sbr revisions playlist revision kit playlist go and check it all questions has been done and do not forget to subscribe to my channel you have already helped me to reach let's say five plus five uh, k plus subscriber please help me to reach you know grow my subscriber make help my channel to grow bigger so that it can reach as many acc students as possible and all can get the benefit of this free lecture so do not keep this knowledge with yourself please share it among your friends family relatives whomever you know who are struggling with a good tutor especially for those who cannot afford due to time or money or it could be anything any reason the main thing is everyone should get access to this through you okay so help me in my initiative to reach out to as many people as possible and it is only possible if you subscribe to my channel and share it among your friends okay so thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture